Frontiersman Joe was a happy farmer, and like every good farmer, he loved three things. His farm, his freedom, his guns, and his truck. But one day, the boss showed up, tried to take his liberty from him. Since then, he's been working hard each day, just like his father taught him, and his grandfather taught his father. One job at a time. Reginald here. Now I've got some bigger fish in the fryer, but I thought I would take a moment and dwell on something a little bit more relaxing. Speaking of brakes, this is a tutorial on the brake action shotgun, and while I'm at it, I'm going to provide you with a little build guide, just to create something a little thematic for you. The brake action shotgun is something of an easter egg support weapon that is usually found on the corpses of super earth farmers, engineers, and other civilian casualties. The brake action shotgun is a two shot over under style long shotgun, and it takes up the support weapon slot of your Helldiver. Now I had to do quite a lot of testing and work to get some idea of what this weapon's actual performance is like because it's not listed anywhere. It's an easter egg gun, it's just sort of dropped on the ground and it doesn't even have some of the features that other guns have, like tick damage icons for armor damage. I just have to guess based on what I can discover. Moreover, it doesn't even spawn on every mission, so there's never a guarantee you're going to be able to find it. So let me give you a distilled table of information on this weapon. It is a support weapon, its damage is substantial, it's its penetration is light armor, its rate of fire is fully super semi-auto, or super full burst fire two shot, its spread radius is see my pictures, its magazine capacity is two, its reserve capacity is 40, ammo recovered on ammo pack pickup is 10, ammo recovered on supply drop pickup is 20, ammo recovered on supply pack pickup is 20. The recoil is mild, but largely irrelevant when using this weapon. When picked up on the ground is often found with either two or zero ammunition, and so you will have to supply with ammunition as you go, which only makes it that much less desirable to pick up. Before we go too much further in this tutorial, I would just like to answer two simple questions. Is the brake action shotgun any good? Eh, not really. This is really something you pick up for fun. You've played with all the good stuff, and you're just looking to joke around and have a good time. Is it any fun? Absolutely. I think this thing's actually a ton of fun to use, so go play with it. Like, you're here to play a video game to have fun, why not have some fun? That's what this tutorial is about. It's to teach you how best to make use of this in a way that would be kind of fluffy or kind of thematic and entertaining, right? So I'm trying to give you some way to entertain yourself as you wait for new content to come out. Let's discuss the performance of the weapon. This weapon offers a tight spread of super buckshot, that's what I'm calling it, at relatively long ranges. Let's take a look at those pictures real quick. Here I have a Punisher's spread where I've shot into the sky and attempted to track or trace the projectiles as they get very far away to see what kind of spread radius we get at around max range. In dark blue, I've colored around the sort of maximum radius that I was able to identify. And in light blue, this seems to be where the projectiles sort of have clumped up, but there's definitely a lot of distribution here. So it's not always the case that, that this is what it looks like. I've seen some very wide L-shaped shots. I've seen some very like splotchy shots. It's very random with the Punisher. Here, this green circle I've added is the radius, roughly speaking, that you can expect projectiles to land somewhere with inside of at maximum range. It's a fairly wide range, and you can really feel that when you're shooting the Punisher at target targets that are further away. You can see it hitting multiple things or missing the target almost entirely. It's very random at fairly short ranges. That is not the case with this shotgun. The brake action shotgun has a very tight spread. You can see the red icon is the distribution of shots between two shots that I calculated from. I realize there's a little time bias on that, but don't worry about it. And the orange circle is essentially the maximum radius I would expect to see shots land within. If you look at this footage, you can see how tightly packed these shells are even at long ranges. This gives the break action shotgun some fairly impressive range against light targets. Let's discuss the key targets this weapon is effective against. For any of the general chaff enemies, this thing with a good center of mass or headshot, shot can one tap it. Warriors one tap on headshots, bots one tap on torso or head. With a little luck and good distribution, it seems like you can even kill multiple enemies enemies at once, especially with bots where some of the projectiles will hit each one sometimes, depending on how they're stacked up with one another. Scavengers, etc. all die with one shot. Hunters die to one shot from this thing. Basically, any of these squishy enemies will die to one hit from this gun, which means you can kill two enemies per reload. The exception to that is some of the heavier enemies uh, wearing light armor, such as brood commanders or berserkers, usually take two or three shots, uh, sometimes more. It depends on where you're getting your hit placement and how tightly you're getting your groupings. The brood commanders are fairly easy to two-shot regularly by simply shooting them in the head twice, that'll blow off their head, then they'll die out 
shortly after. Berserkers are a bit harder. I really recommend aiming for the midsection, that red glowy section there. It's pretty easy to bifurcate them with two shots at close ranges. If you're a little further out, you're just really hoping the spread is going to get you that headshot. So aiming for the middle section will do you better since most of the misses on the spread will hit the torso, arms, or legs, delivering more of your damage on target. Against Hive Guard, you're really going to need to be aiming for those soft spots. This thing is fairly accurate at close ranges, so you're not going to have that much of a trouble doing it, but I recommend trying to outflank the Hive Guard so that you can kill them that way, or bring a different weapon. As far as the rest of the medium armored enemies go, this thing is pretty rough to use against it. It does bounce off of medium armor proper, and so you're going to be struggling to deal with any kind of devastators unless you're able to get a clean headshot with this thing at fairly close range. Specifically for heavy devastators, this thing is just awful, so don't even waste your time. Use one of your other guns. Something with good accuracy would be preferable here. For rocket devastators, I suppose you could go after their heads with this. It's not the worst, but it really doesn't stagger them much, so I would prefer to use any other weapon as well. For normal devastators, they're a bit safer to fight on average, so I think it's okay if you want to, but you're kind of just wasting ammo, unless you can get a clean headshot. Given that nursing spewers have light armor on their heads, this thing should be fairly effective against them, but bile spewers have medium armor on their heads and it will just bounce off, so don't waste your ammo. And the fact that this thing can't really effectively deal with anything in medium armor or heavier is exactly why I say it's kind of not that good. It's super fun to play with, even though you only get two shots, but listen, your support weapon slot is usually there to help you with vehicle tier targets. You need to blow up a tank. You need to blow up, you know, a charger, a bile titan, something like that. That's why you have that slot. You're generally not running the machine gun or whatever at higher level difficulties for sure. At the lower level difficulties, it's perfectly viable to do so. But at the higher level difficulties, you need that slot for those vehicle targets. Otherwise, you're going to run into a lot of trouble. That's really where this thing struggles. So when talking about the builds here, you're going to have to understand that you're going to be relying on your team in order to support you if you're going to be running this thing. That's no problem for me. I have some friends to play with. They don't mind bringing the anti-tank that I'm not bringing. You seen the break action shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you what are more. you doing? You don't know how stupid I am. Uh, we can goof around and have a good time, and I can pretend to be a cowboy. Cowboy time? Let's go. But if you're going to be uh, playing this solo, just expect a challenging gameplay experience. And if that's what you're going for, that's fine. I will say I have successfully cleared up to a level 7 boss mission with this shotgun. I haven't found any on level 9, so I can't really say for sure whether or not I would succeed. I have also cleared plenty of lower level missions as well. So uh, these are seemingly more common in some of the lower level missions as well. So that makes them a little bit more usable. Uh, they are very handy and level one, two, three, four, five level missions. Those are very viable places to run this gun if you're looking to have a good time. And don't eschew those missions either. I think they're actually really fun to play. Uh, I like to take maybe like five, 10, 15 minutes to go play a level one once in a while just because it's a good little relaxing solo experience. You can kind of have a little fun uh, goofing off and doing cowboy stuff. Let's talk tips, tricks, and idiosyncrasies, and then we'll jump into the build guides. Okay, so a couple tips here on this weapon is the ADS does not have any kind of like red dot. It is a classical iron sight situation. It doesn't appear to increase the accuracy of the weapon in this way, so I really don't tend to run this in first person view. I tend to run this in third person view because it's a fairly quick aiming weapon and it's nice to have that, but on occasion I want to take a very precise shot. I will line up with the ADS. The weapon actually does tend technically have a shell by shell reload capacity. So if you fire one shell and wish to reload it, you can without dispensing of the other shell that you have in the weapon. This means you can keep one in the chamber while reloading, which is pretty handy if you only have two shots. The animation in first person also looks pretty cool for this, so I just wanted to call that out. I like that kind of thing. The melee on this weapon doesn't appear to be any better than any other weapon, but it was worth checking. By holding R, you can review the menu on this weapon and select burst fire if you like, it's not especially good, and I don't really recommend using it. I did make an effort to use available resources to make an estimate of the damage per shot this weapon deals, and frankly, I totally failed and have no idea. My table represents something like 1400 damage per shot against the mech, but then it's like 500 damage per shot against the brood commander, a little less, and I, honestly, it doesn't make any sense. So for now, I'm sticking with substantive damage. The break action shotgun cannot open containers. 
The most important idiosyncrasy of this weapon is that it is a pickup found randomly on the map and not on every map either, so you're never going to be guaranteed to be able to get one of these to play with. You're going to just have to queue up with your cowboy build and hope you find one, and if you don't, well, then just play as is. You'll just have to play whatever you brought with you. Let's talk builds. So, given the fact that this is a random pickup weapon, we're going to be throwing out a couple of builds here that are very thematic. I'm going to actually do two, and they're intended to give you the capacity to play the game still if you don't get lucky and find one of these. All right, so for build number one, I have selected light armor, and I've done that mostly for aesthetic reasons. I really feel like if you're some farmer guy who's been getting ready for the evil robots to show up, you'd probably have something like this laying around in your basement, you know, some sort of uh, light armor set from military leftovers from the surplus store. You'd have maybe a pistol caliber carbine, and then you'd have a revolver, of course, because you're definitely a cowboy. And then from there, I've selected impact grenades because otherwise it's really difficult to play into bots and even bugs. Impact grenades are very strong, and they can blow up tanks. Two impact grenades to the turret of a shredder tank will kill it, and two impact grenades to the upper rear. As long as you get the AoE to hit that weak spot, you can blow up an annihilator tank. In my view, that just makes impacts kind of indispensable, since this kit already absolutely blows at dealing with armor. I think it's actually a fun sort of fluffy way to, to like force yourself to deal with armored problems with some additional challenges. Thematically, I'm going for something that's more of a guerrilla fighter since you're going to be a, a militia Minuteman farmer who is really just taken to fighting the enemy because they're on his turf. For stratagems, I've selected the following items. The anti-materials rifle, uh, the supply pack because a farmer is always prepared, and also because I hate picking up that shotgun and not having ammo for it, so a supply pack is a good choice. It's also kind of nice to have one when you're running with your team and you don't have something big on your back uh, to be able to give them, since they're running the big guns, some extra ammo. A machine gun turret. Now I know you might be thinking, automated machine gun turrets, really? But this is Space Frontier. He probably picked one up somewhere wear and modified it with a little bit of jury rigging and elbow grease. Finally, incendiary mines seem like the most jury riggable item in the kit in general, and that just seems appropriate. I will say there's some problems with mines, but uh, let's not go into it here. We'll talk about it another day. Build number two, I have changed armors again. Light armor, mostly for aesthetic reasons, the same kind of aesthetic of sort of a light military surplus look. I've chosen a marksman rifle this time, the R63 Diligence. I feel like this is appropriate as a hunting rifle stand-in. We're keeping the revolver because we're going cowboy frontiersman again, and impacts for the reasons stated before. We're changing things up a little in the heavy weapon slot. The support weapon I've chosen here is a flamer. I feel like the flamethrower is a choice that someone could figure out how to build on their own on a farm if they had enough time and enough incentive, and so that feels appropriate here. Supply pack, also a good choice with the flamethrower, but likewise a good choice for the same reasons as previous mentioned. The heavy machine gun emplacement is a little bit more out there, but I felt like something that you have to man yourself had the good sort of jury rig aesthetic. And lastly here, AP mines just to sort of change it up from the last one. Same thought here. Generally speaking, when I'm choosing stratagems for a thematic build like this, pretending to be a farmer instead of a helldiver, I thought it would be fun to pick the lowest tech items on the list and go with those. I also think Gorbital Gas Strike is okay. I don't obviously have the capacity as a farmer to call in orbital strikes, but you can imagine throwing a grenade or something like that if you want to. Uh, it seems like maybe some uh, gas options would be good. Maybe you've concocted some sort of horrific pesticide abomination and you're tinkering and that's what you're throwing at your enemies instead of, you know, like formalized weaponized gas. In the interest of full disclosure, I often run this build, even when I'm looking for the shotgun, with the mech because I love mechs and it's not the worst thing to be able to hop in a mech and help the team out when you grab a shotgun for the rest of your gameplay experience. So feel free to do that if you like to. If you are running the mech, uh, I think the EMS mortar is actually a really strong pairing with it because it's immune to EMS and you can kind of waddle around however you want. Obviously, I'm not requiring you to do anything just because I told you it, but these are things that I think are fun when playing around, so it creates a good theme for the shotgun. I'd really like to make one recommendation out the door with this weapon. I don't really want to change it in any particular way, except one. I'd like it to actually be a stratagem. It's really annoying not being able to get the weapon whenever I want to. And, you know, it's not like it's amazing, but it could be fun to play with whenever I want. So here's a proposal. Rather than having it be a stratagem that you call in and then run around with in this traditional sense, it is a stratagem that is automatically equipped to your Helldiver on deployment and redeployment if you die. This is a reason to take it over other options. 
options. Yes, it's not very good and it's not amazing at all. And you're going to want those other support weapons. But if you take the stratagem, you'll always have at least the break action shotgun on your back. Maybe that's a little much. Maybe it would make it like an always pick, but I think it's bad enough as a weapon that probably a lot of people would just skip it for something like a railgun or whatever, or even just one of the other artillery barrages. I mean, there's so many good stratagems that doesn't sound like a particularly useful one. It would give me and other weirdos the ability to play with the thing when we want to. I certainly won't be heartbroken if that doesn't come to pass, but hey, I thought I'd pitch something. It's fine if the Easter egg weapon stays an Easter egg. With that, I hope you had a little fun learning about this weapon. I know I had some fun putting this tutorial together and playing around with these themed builds. So thank you very much for visiting. Have a lovely week, and hopefully I will be seeing you all on Thursday. Good luck out there, Helldiver.